Hi. So today I wanted to give you an overview of what you can do with signals in the go.game engine and how you can use autoloads to make the most of them where other things might not work out quite as well. So I'm not starting out with an empty scene here. What I have is a player character, it's just an area 2D, and some coins, go.logo coins, which are rotating here around. The player can move, but that's about it. Currently nothing is interacting yet. So what are these coins? Let's just take a look at one. A coin is also an area 2D and has a collision shape on it and an icon and an animation player that's just rotating it. But this part doesn't really matter, it would work just as well without that. The script doesn't really do anything, we can ignore that, it just starts the animation. So the actually interesting part is going to be we want the player to actually be able to collect these coins. Now if we look into the player script, the player has a score, it starts at zero, but we're not doing anything with it yet. What we can do for that is we want the player to collide with stuff. So let's have the player collide with these collision shapes. By default everything is going to be on the first collision layer, and I'm going to keep it this way so everything is going to collide just fine. So first of all, let's take a look. This area 2D, if we click on node here, has a bunch of predefined signals. These are probably the ones most people are already familiar with, but let me show you anyway. So we can say in this case, let's say area entered. So it tells us the area 2D object we are colliding with. We can double click this and connect it to any script we have. We're going to connect it to our player itself and it's going to create a new method. Let's take a look. Here it is, a function or method that is triggered as soon as this signal happens. So as soon as the area to decollide with something, this happens. Now we don't have anything else around that we could possibly collide with. So in our case, it's pretty simple. If we collide with anything, it's going to be a coin. In this case, what we can just do is say area.q3 because we want to delete the coin, the other object. So we can't collect the same coin twice and we want to increase our score. So no, uh, score plus equals one. And let's print our score just so we can see that it's actually working. Uh, let's make this a bit larger and try to collide with something. And it's printing one, two, three, and so on. So yes, it is working correctly. We can collect these coins. The predefined signal is being triggered, but what we still have to worry about is our score up here isn't updating at all. The reason for that is, of course, this is currently just a score label. It's not really doing anything, it's just a number written in the text up here. Now, we could set this manually, but considering we're in the player, the way to set this manually would be a bit ugly, I would say, because we would first have to look up the next layer to our level, then from there have to look for the score label, and then we can update it. So instead what we can do is we can define a signal. Let me just do that. So signal, um, score changed, I'd say. And we can optionally, we could just leave it like that if we just want to have a signal when something changes. But we also want to set the new score. So I'm going to set this new value in here. That way, whenever the score changed, we can just emit this. So let's do that. Instead of printing the score, we can say emit signal and just take the name of our score changed here. And then of course we need to give it a value. So we just pass score, which we are updating here. And with that, a signal is being emitted. Now there's still one issue here because our score label currently doesn't actually receive it. So we are emitting a signal, but nobody is receiving it. Now what we can do, if we click on the player, we can see here, we can select it the same way we did with the area entered before. Go here and then we could attach this to a script here if we had one. We currently don't, so let's just 
make one for now. Score label. Yeah, let's give the score label a script. All right, now we go in here, score changed. And we emit, we can connect it here. And it's going to create a function for us, the same it did for with the predefined signals. Now what we can do here is we can just say text equals str of new value to make sure that the new value is now actually a string. And let's take a look. And now the score is updating correctly. Nice. Now this is fine and all. And for simple scenarios, I would say this is going to be working fine. But there are some situations where this could actually end up breaking. Say for example, our player is not actually here from the start, but is being spawned in a bit afterwards. Say we are having a cutscene that's running in code where some enemies are already moving around, or whatever it is you want to do, and then the player is being spawned in. In that case, this would be a bit problematic because we would have nothing to connect right at the start. Now there are ways to do that in code, but it can get cluttered very quickly. So one thing you can do that specifically is very useful when dealing with things you want to show on the user interface and stuff like that is to use an autoload script to handle all of the signals of this sort for you. So you don't have to sort where they go and whether the objects are already around which should be connected to it. So let me show you how to do that. First of all, we're going to get rid of this connection here because we'll be doing that manually now. We can get rid of this here as well, I guess. Actually, I'm going to keep this around. It could still come in handy. What we can definitely do though is we can cut this out. Don't just delete it, I'll still be using it elsewhere. Instead we can do, let's go in here and create a new script. I just call it a signals, signals script and where is it? Yeah, that's fine. It didn't open there. Okay, now this signal script on its own isn't attached to any node or anything. It's not going to be doing anything much. And that's fine. What it is going to do is it's taking over our score changed signal here. So this now no longer exists inside of the player, it exists here in this thing. Now if we look into the player script, that's one issue here, because if we try to emit the signal now, it's just not gonna work. We can't emit a signal that's no longer up here. What we can do is we can make this script here visible to every other script. So we can go into the autoload function, say select our signals, open, add, and there we go. So now if we go here, we can say signals dot emit signal score changed. This way, any signals we have that are of this sort, anything we can use this for HB bars, points, anything similar to this, we can just call it from here or any other script we have around. It's always going to be visible. In the same way, we can receive the signal in code. So what we can say is our score label can just get an on ready. So a function ready. And this means it's going to connect itself as soon as this thing is spawned in. The signals script is being spawned in right at the start when you first launch your game. That's the whole point of an autoload. It's always around. It's always going to be in the background. So whenever our player and our score labels spawn in, they can connect themselves. This here is just going to call it on signals. So whenever we try to call it, it's going to be there. And this here can connect this function to signals. So let's do that. Signals dot connect and then we're going to want the name of the signal score changed and then we're going to want a target object in this case the target object is ourselves because this script here is within the same script we are writing this code so we can just write self 
If you want to do this on a child object or something, you can use that as well. But in this case, we don't want that. We just wanted to use it right where we are. Now, lastly, we want to connect it to this function. So that's what we can do. Uh, we can just give it the name of the function on play on underscore player score changed. And now this signal is going to be connected the same way we did in the UI previously, just via code. And it's going to happen as soon as this object is loaded in. This should still work as normal. Nope, there's still some issue. Let's take a look what the debugger has to say. Oh, of course, yes, naturally, I completely forgot to actually add our score parameter in here. Let's reload this now that the score is in here. And let's see. And now the score is correctly updating as it should be. So yeah, this is how you can use auto loads to make your signals just a little bit more convenient in certain cases. Now, obviously you're not necessarily gonna want to use this on every signal ever. Otherwise your list in here is gonna get really long and you really don't need all of those signals loaded at the same time. This is mostly useful for things in the UI or something that's relevant in the entirety of your game and not just in a single scene. That being said, this is going to be all for today. Bye.